Chapter Four of Deadwood Dick Junior Branded. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Deadwood Dick Junior Branded by Edward L. Wheeler. Chapter Four: Rejecting a Proposal. Dick Bristol smiled grimly. He knew that Captain Joaquin was no fool, and also that the outlaw did not take him to be one. Was this the chance for his life the road raider intended to give him? It looked so. Dick could plainly see the string attached to the gift. He did not respond immediately. "'You don't answer,' urged the Red Rover. "'What is the use? Were I to accept all in good faith, you would not trust me.' "'Why not?' "'Because I am Deadwood Dick, the dead-set detective and rogue runner.' Captain Joaquin smiled in his turn. He and his men had removed their masks. "'That is a good enough reason, certainly,' he said. "'And that is the only show you intend to give me?' "'What else can I do? I will give you an equal share with the rest of my men of the plunder we have taken to-day according to the rate I divide with them and make you one of us. I can't do any more than that.' "'There is no use our trying to fool each other, Captain Joaquin.' "'Then you don't believe I will do what I say?' "'Yes, I believe you will do that if I say I will accept the proposition.' "'Then what is the matter with your accepting it? You would make a fine lieutenant for me now that poor Hoxey is dead, thanks to that express messenger.' "'I had rather deal openly with you than underhanded, Red Rover,' was Dick's response. "'What do you mean?' "'Just what you know, that I am first, last, and all the time against birds of your feather, and that were I to accept your offer, it would be only to do you a trick at the first opportunity. A murmur of admiration ran through the company of cutthroats. That being the case, I must recall the offer, that's all. I have no way of convincing you that I meant it in good faith. No, you would find it impossible to do that. Well, I have given you the show I promised. And it was about what I expected at your hands. You have got me, you mean to do away with me. "'Well, I do not blame you for that.' "'Thunder! But you are a brave cuss, Dick Bristol. What a team you and I would make if we could only have confidence in each other and work together. But that is out of the question?' "'Entirely out of the question.' "'Then what can you propose?' "'Let me go, and I pledge you my word not to move against you for a period of ten days, you to observe the same armistice. And after that? War to the knife again.' I hope you do not take me for a fool. Not at all, save only that all villains are fools and that they go wrong instead of right. Have a care, Bristol. Some word of yours may cost your life without a moment's notice. I am not the man to brook many such insults I give you warning. Neither are you a coward, Red Rover. You would not shoot me down handcuffed as I am. Again a murmur ran through the band. You have nothing more to propose? No, I considered that proposition a sort of even exchange, that was all. An exchange? Where does the exchange come in, I would like to know? I do not see that I would be getting anything out of it. It would be giving me my life for yours. I could have picked you off easily when you entered that car after me, but spared you. Ha <laughs> ha! Lucky for you you didn't do that. You would have been a dead man at the same instant. And you would have been just as dead, for I seldom miss my mark when I take a bead on a man. Then why didn't you shoot me? Come, now why didn't you? Because I knew it would cost the lives of the others in the car, who hadn't the nerve to follow where I led on the first occasion. It would have been much easier to have shot you than it was to take those two fellows who already had the drop on the car. Well, that cuts no ice with me, since you didn't spare me for any love you have for me. There's really no reason why I should spare you that I can see. Nor I. Then what are you kicking about? All I'm asking is a fair chance. When I put on these handcuffs I had your word that I would get that. And I have given it, and you have refused it. I can do nothing more than that. It has been war to the knife between us as you've expressed it, and I have won the fight. I would be a fool to give up the advantage gained just as you have a mind to look at it. Suppose you had captured me, would you let me go again? No, sir. 
then say no more about it. Neither can I let you go. I would be a fool if I did. Well, I have to agree with you, Captain Joaquin. As I said before, there is no use in our trying to fool each other. We are foes to the bitter end, and so be it. The outlaw gave a nod and a wave of the hand in acquiescence, and which at the same time cut the subject short. A little while later he called a halt. "'Here, men,' he said, "'is a place for us to part company. You know what the program is?' They answered that they did. "'You, Hurley, I'll make you my lieutenant in place of Hoxie. Take the men on at speed to Injun Ford, and there divide your force half going up the creek and half down, part by twos, and scatter to every point of the compass until the time of meeting, as agreed. "'All right, we understand,' answered Hurley. Captain Joaquin dismounted. "'But what about the prisoner?' his lieutenant inquired. "'What are we going to do with him?' "'Hang me if I know,' responded the Red Rover, rubbing his chin in a meditative manner. "'Just whatever you say, Captain,' assured Hurley. "'I am afraid to trust him with you boys,' decided Captain Joaquin after a few moments' reflection. He would be sure to find the soft spot in your hearts if you have got such organs and play upon it. Guess I'll have to take him with me. Dismount, Deadwood Dick. And be murdered in cold blood somewhere in the mountain passes. You'll be shot here now if you don't. Well, it is about as broad as it is long, observed Dick, throwing his leg over and leaping lightly to the ground. You hold the winning card, Captain. Yes, and I intend to play it for all there is in it, too, was the rejoinder. Come, boys, off with you, and make all the time you can, for the sheriff and his posse will be on your trail in less than two hours. And let him catch us if he can, cried Hurley as he touched his horse and led the way, the riderless horses being led. The others cheered as they followed, and as soon as they had passed out of sight, Captain Joaquin turned to Dick and said, Now then, Deadwood Dick, you follow me. End of chapter 4